Island X. Everything is ready. Supplies and equipment must be landed to hold a beachhead. No, this isn't a real invasion landing, but this jeep is really going waiting. It's the result of a new process worked out in the European theater of operation and a new wrinkle in the fight against the Axis. Vehicles so processed can operate in approximately three and one half feet of water for periods of up to six minutes. The process involves extending the air intake and gasoline tank bend above water level with an asbestos waterproofing compound. Let's follow this driver as he goes through the three phases in waterproofing a vehicle for amphibious operations. A kit contains the asbestos waterproofing compound and all other necessary materials. The compound itself is a thick, pliable substance that can be worked much in the manner of modeling clay or putty. During the whole waterproofing process, the driver's hands, the compound, and the parts to be sealed must be free of dirt, moisture, and grease. Other items contained in the kit are lengths of soft iron wire, rags, friction tape, copper wire, and flexible air intake tubing. The first item to be treated is the fire extinguisher which is protected from the corrosive effects of the salt water by sealing both the top and bottom with the asbestos waterproofing compound, or AWC, which is its GI name. The driver must now go to work on the vehicle itself. When processing the distributor, exceptional care must be taken. Unless it's perfectly sealed, the engine will fail when the vehicle enters the water. It must be noted that all surfaces are well-rounded, with no irregularities or rough surfaces that may tend to pull the compound off when the vehicle is moving through the water. The suppressor on the lead between the coil and distributor is finally covered over with AWC. Friction tape is placed over the breather and left unsealed until just before the landing operation. The Jeep's dash panel is next, and the driver proceeds to waterproof the panel lights by working a strip of AWC around them. This same care must be observed when waterproofing all the vulnerable parts that would be affected or corroded by the action of the salt water. In every case, the AWC is carefully worked in so that the compound tapers to an edge, forming a waterproof seal. This is true whether the part covered is a gear housing, a starter motor, the carburetor, a tail light, or an electrical connection. All must have the same thorough attention, for it must be remembered that seawater will quickly rot and destroy parts and parts are hard to replace, especially on an invaded shore. Now for the horn, the Sunday driver's plaything. Overlapping pieces of tape are used to make a firm base for the compound. Patties of AWC, the correct size and shape, are then molded in place. When the mouth of the horn has been covered, the seams along its length are sealed. The compound must be molded into all holes, cracks, and seams to obtain essential watertight protection. And our Sunday driver's noisemaker is expertly silenced. It's been quite a workout, so the driver gives himself a breathing spell by sealing the horn button. A nice, easy one to do. And so, with the completion of phase one, and 90% of the entire job, the driver takes a last look to assure himself that he's left nothing unsealed that could cause the failure of the engine or damage to any part of the vehicle. Satisfied that he hasn't forgotten anything, he's ready to drive his vehicle to the embarkation point, where the steps essential to phase two are undertaken.
This phase must be executed within two or three miles of the loading dock or embarkation point. If greater distances are involved, the second phase must be done aboard the invasion craft. At the embarkation point, some protection for the vehicles must be provided lest rain interfere with the waterproofing. In bivouac, the officer in charge checks on the work. The last step in phase two is the improvising of an extension from the air intake. Here, the driver uses rubber impregnated tubing, which has been split, forming slots on opposite sides. This permits the tube to overlap the air intake assembly. Then, using friction tape and wire, the tube is fastened onto the induction tube assembly, approximately two inches from the end. The wire is tightened on the intake assembly, and the joint, just made, is sealed over with AWC, making a watertight connection. The free end of the flexible tubing is brought out under the rear lower part of the hood, up along the windshield, and finally fastened with wire to the small loop on the top of the windshield frame. Care must be taken when closing the hood to prevent pinching down upon the flexible tubing. And stage two is completed. The vehicle is then driven to the invasion craft where phase three in the waterproofing of the vehicle will take place. However, no more than 12 hours may elapse between the time of the processing and the time when the vehicle is to enter the water. Ideally, this third and last phase should be executed during the last hour before the landing is to take place. The engine must be cool when this work is being completed. The driver seals the distributor vent or breather with a thin layer of AWC working it in carefully to make a waterproof seal. Then, small wads of the waterproofing compound are used to seal all the battery vents, and the driver's work is nearly done. As the invasion craft nears the beach, the driver reseals the ignition switch in the on position. And so the operation is successful. The vehicles have been correctly processed and will carry safely to shore the equipment and supplies so necessary for our fighting men. Each and every driver has followed his instructions to the letter, for they, with their vehicles, form a team with a real job to do. They know that by performing their jobs efficiently, they'll be protecting their own lives, the lives of others, and be doing a soldier's part in helping to speed the inevitable victory. Thank you.